and welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Chloe Allen. And I'm Irene Cardenas. Thanks so much for joining us. This Thursday is Higher Education Day. See how local students will be affected. As Falcon Weekly reporter Wilbert Scott shares information from student life worker, UPC coordinator Tanya Wang, joins us in the newsroom for more. Hey, February 27th is Higher Education Day. On this day, many local public schools and college students recognize their dependence on public school funds. University Program Council Coordinator Tanya Wong said it is important for students to go to Capitol to show lawmakers that higher education is important. She says that this type of public visibility can increase our chances of getting state funds that are split between K through 12 schools and Alabama colleges and universities. Wong also said students are encouraged to attend the educational event this Thursday, but students should consult with their professors before missing any classes. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Wilbert Scott. Leading up to Higher Ed Day, the University Program Council hosted a casino night on February 13th. The event allowed students to play casino-style games like slot machines and cards. Students were able to cash in their chips and pictures Four pictures in a photo booth. UPC coordinator Tanya Huang says the goal of the casino night event was to show students how the government is gambling with money that could be used to fund public universities in Alabama. In state news, Alabama could become the 44th state with its own lottery. Three candidates for governor are running on state lottery platforms. Both Democratic candidates, former U U.S. Representative Parker Griffith and businessman Kevin Bass, are proposing a lottery to pay for college scholarships with one of the, one of the Republican candidates. Stacey George is advocating a lottery to also pay for scholarships and several other programs. To create a lottery, the legislator must pass a constitutional amendment, then voters must approve the amendment in a referendum. The state legislator is looking at the bills that would all add mandatory prayer in schools. While another bill could replace restrictions on how teenagers use tanning beds. For the first bill, a key committee in Alabama's House of Representatives has pushed through legislation requiring students and teachers at all of the state's public schools to spend 15 minutes every morning learning about congressional procedures, including reciting a prayer read at legislative ses sessions. This bill comes just one week after the State House passed a proposed amendment that could allow ten commandment, the Ten Commandments to be displayed in public schools. We wanted to know what Montevallo students thought about the school prayer bill. We sent our man on the street reporter Matt Lord out to hear what students had to say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jimmy. Um, personally, my views on this bill uh, it's kind of contrary to, um, to what America was founded on, which, while is kind of deadening nowadays, um, the freedom of religion, when you force kids to take time to reflect and whatnot on God, whichever one you may or may not believe in, um, kind of removes from that your forcing. It's not quite right. Okay. You know, as far as I think about the uh, mandatory prayer in schools thing they're doing, I think it's a good thing, really. Uh, kids need more prayer in school. That you know, things did not really start to go bad in the public school system until we started removing God. Me as a Christian, I personally believe that that should be a mandatory thing. Kids need to learn. You know, whether it may be Christianity or not, whether they may be Christian, that's on the parents to decide. You know, that's about all I think. I believe 15 minutes at the start of each school day just for an opening prayer is way too long for students not to be focusing on their studies. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the curriculum and religion was already taken out of our school system when the, the pledge was taken out. So the new proposed law that you have to pray in school, that's, I don't mind them setting aside the time to pray in, to pray in school because it should be a choice and you should have the time if you want to. And you can pray in whatever way you want or not pray. I really don't mind that one. But the required, because it said something about Congress requiring a prayer, that's wrong because you shouldn't require everyone to have the same thing because even in anything, no one has the same way to pray. And if it's all that, it's not right. 
The time, I'm okay with. The requirement of it, I'm not. We want to hear what you think about the school prayer bill. Go to our Facebook page and give us your opinion. Governor Robert Bentley says he will sign a bill that will set limits on teens using tanning salons. The bill sponsor, Representative Ron Johnson, says it's a result of dermatologists seeing a growth in the number of teenagers with melanoma from excessive use of tanning beds. The bill will prohibit anyone 14 and younger from using a tanning bed without a doctor's prescription. 15-year-olds will be able to use them if a parent is with them, and 16 and 17-year-olds could use them with a written approval. Amada Valaman is behind bars for the second time this month after police say he stalked a person by placing a tracking device in their cell phone. 39-year-old Timothy Lee Richards faces two charges of first-degree aggravated stalking in addition to violating the victim's protection order. Richards was arrested earlier this month but on stalking charges but was re released on bond. But authorities rearrested him last Monday on another charge of aggravated stalking as well as violating the protection order. He is currently being held without bond. He has a preliminary hearing set for March 6 in Shelby County Court District. A Central Alabama animal shelter is still feeling the effects of the extreme winter weather from a few weeks ago. The Shelton County Humane Society is overcrowded with stray animals after they were dropped off almost daily after winter storms hit the region. The shelter is partnering with Pilots and Paws, a group that files animals to shelters that are less crowded. The shelter is also looking for volunteer foster families who will keep a dog or cat temporarily before being moved to another shelter or adopted permanently. If you're interested in helping out, go to our Facebook page for more information. Aaron Andrews lands a new job on TV. Coming up, find out which re popular reality show she will be hosting. And a business deal could mean a better deal for Netflix users who had bad internet connections. Find out why it could soon be easier to stream your favorite movies and TV shows. Those stories and more when Falcon Weekly returns. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. Switching gears to entertainment news, rumors have been swirling that pop star Justin Bieber could soon be moving to the Atlanta area. But now it turns out that the stories of the residents protesting the potential move to Buckhead neighborhood are actually a hoax. The protests were staged by a local radio show called The Regular Guys. They say that the most of the protesters are actually station interns. They had even given interviews to the media using false names. Meanwhile, officials in Buckhead say they would welcome the Beeps to their neighborhood. So far, Bieber has not confirmed the news. Avatar actor Sam Worthington faces assault charges after punching a photographer. The photographer allegedly kicked Worthington's girlfriend. Both were arrested and are scheduled to appear in court at a later time. Worthington was released on bail shortly after his arrest. Actor Alec Baldwin says he despises the media and is dumb being in the public eye. He says he would like to move back to Los Angeles where he can live behind a gate. But his departure from the public eye could temp be temporary. He says that he one day wants to run for public office. One of the stars of the Ghostbusters film franchise has died. Harold Ramis died Monday at his home near Chicago. His agent says he died from an autoimmune disorder. Ramis was known on screen for his role as Egon Spangler in the Ghostbusters films. He also directed the movies Analyze This and National Lampoon's Vacation. Ramis is survived by his wife, three children, and two grandchildren. Harold Ramis was 69 years old. ABC has announced Fox Sports reporter Aaron Andrews will be, new, will be the new co-host of Dancing with the Stars. Andrews is no stranger to the show. She competed in season 10 and reached the finals. She is replacing Brooke Burke Charvet and joining Tom Bur Burgeon for the 18th season of the show, which returns March 17th. Visitors to the happiest place on earth will have to pay more for their tickets soon. The Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando raised the price of tickets Sunday. It will now cost $99 for a one-day pass to the Magic Kingdom. That is up from the original $95 price. Epcot Hollywood Studios and the Animal Kingdom have gone up from $90 to $95. And tickets from children, for children from the ages of 3 to 9 will cost $88. Disney has also added $1 to their park, 
park hopper option for those wanting to visit the multiple parks in one day. This is the second time within a year Disney has raised their theme park ticket prices. The biggest night in Hollywood is almost here. Tune in for the Oscars Sunday night on ABC. The red carpet will roll out at 6.30 for interviews with the nominees. The award ceremony will begin with host Ellen DeGeneres at 8.30. I don't know about you, Irene, but I am so excited about the Oscars this year. I really like Ellen De DeGeneres. Oh, I know. I enjoy her as a host. She is hysterical. Do you know who's performing this year? I heard Pink. Pink. Um, she's going to be there. You too is also performing, and Idina Menzel, of course. I love the. She's going to perform Let It Go, isn't she? Yes, she is from Frozen. I so love that movie. We'll definitely have to tune in for that. Definitely. definitely. Well. Apple says that your security could have been compromised on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac computer. Up next, see what the company is recommending you do to protect yourself online. And dude looks like a lady. See how some brave guys from UM got all dolled up to compete in this year's He's a Lady pageant. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. Well, it's a big week for consumer news. Now let's head over to Falcon Weekly. Now let's head over to Falcon Weekly Sloan Gibby for a look at this week's consumer headlines. Thanks, guys. Apple released a software update for iOS 7 to patch a potential security risk for users of iPhone, iPad, and iTouch. The fix was released after Apple found that hackers might be able to see your private information by accessing emails, instant messages, and even bank transactions. Apple says its operating systems for Mac computers have the same risk and are working on an update. Experts say that it is unlikely that personal information was accessed illegally, but recommend updating your devices now and using other browsers than Safari for OS X systems without an available Apple fix. In other Apple news, co-founder Steve Jobs may appear on a U.S. postage stamp next year. The Washington Post released a list of people that have been approved to be stamp subjects. If selected, Jobs would be the first person from America's computer industry to be honored on a stamp. Along with Jobs, the list includes Michael Jackson, Jimi Hendrix, John Lennon, and Elizabeth Taylor. The Postal Service says the list is still subject to change. The new stamps are part of an effort to raise revenues by issuing more stamps of pop culture figures. Streaming movies on Netflix should get faster. Comcast says it will allow Netflix to directly connect to its broadband network. CNN's Allison Kozik has details. Quicker download speeds are just around the corner for Comcast and Netflix customers who want their house of cards fix. The political thriller, a signature Netflix show, is a big hit and a favorite of binge watchers who can catch up on a whole season in one weekend. House of Cards was one reason that Netflix stock was the best performer in the S&P 500 last year. Now the big news is that Comcast, America's biggest cable company, confirms that it will allow Netflix to connect directly to its broadband network. The Wall Street Journal says Netflix will pay Comcast for the access, and CNN Money confirmed with a source that a direct pipeline for Netflix has already been established. It's a big deal because Netflix traffic can sometimes be up to a third of all broadband traffic at any one time in the U.S. Internet service providers have wanted Netflix to pay them for bandwidth. The dispute apparently slowed Netflix speeds for customers of Verizon's Fios by 14 percent earlier this year. Speeds for Comcast customers have also been sluggish. The Netflix Comcast deal has been in the works for months and according to a statement the deal is already delivering an even better user experience to consumers while allowing for future growth in Netflix traffic. So if you're a Netflix binge watcher and a Comcast customer, you should be able to spend many long hours on the couch without annoying delays as you catch up on your favorite series. I'm Allison Kotick in New York. Getting more cable for less. We have some tips put together by the Wall Street Journal on how you might be able to lower those expensive cable bills. First, check out all the deals from the competition. Your current cable company might match it or even beat it. Also, keep track of when your current deal ends. Most companies bet that you won't remember to call back after your deal expires. And pay your bill on time. They know you are a valued customer and will work harder to keep you. Lastly, if you call and come up short, wait a few days and then call again. You will likely get a new customer service agent who may be more willing to cut you a deal. If you have any tips to save money on cable, be sure to tell us on our Facebook page. That's all for Consumer News. Back to you guys.
Now it's time for a check for, of our Montevallo forecast. Falcon Weekly's Madison Inbush joins us as, join us with a look at this week's weather. So, Madison, is it going to get back to the 20s again this week? Yes, the beginning of this week is warm and it's starting to get us ready for actually spring break, but the middle of this week is going to get cooler again and back actually into the 20s. Just when you thought we were done. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Let's take a look at this week's forecast. Today we start off temperatures a little warmer like they were last week. The high is 64 and the low is 43 and it's partly cloudy. Tomorrow we still have the same temperatures with the high of 62 and a low of 38 with a chance of rain. But on Wednesday the temperatures drop into the 20s. The high is 43 with a chance of rain during the day but at night it drops to the 25 with clear skies. On Thursday the high is 48 and the low is still in the 20s but it's sunny. And on Friday, we start off the weekend with a chance of rain, but it clears up for the rest of the weekend. So the high on Friday is 56 and the low is 40. And on Saturday, the high is 57 with a low of 40. And on Sunday, we warm back up to 62 with a low of 40 and partly cloudy. Thanks, Madison. Coming up, Rio Smith joins us in the studio for a look at sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. I'm Rio Smith with a look at this week's sports. Big news for our very own Montevallo Falcons. With the win Saturday afternoon against Georgia College, the men's basketball team clinched the PBC Western Division title. This is the third straight year that UM have won the Western Division. The Falcons' final game is this Saturday at Young Harris. Then the team will compete in the PBC Championship in Columbus, Georgia next month. For more about the upcoming tournament as well as other campus sports news, be sure to check out Falcon Fever this Thursday. Two weeks after Michael Sam aimed to become the first openly gay player in the NFL, Jason Collins became the first openly gay athlete to play in a game in all of the major North American sports. The Brooklyn Nets signed Collins to a 10-day contract Saturday. He was ready to suit up right away against the struggling Kobe bryant -less Los Angeles Lakers. Collins, who revealed in an interview last summer that he is gay, got a modest standing ovation from the crowd. The Nets were in dire need of a big man after trading power forward Reggie Evans to the Sacramento Kings last week, and they may have their answer with Collins against a... As you see him shooting a free throw here as he checks in, he plays good defense immediately. After a tough drive by Chris Kame, he makes a nice steal that is stolen and corralled by Darren Williams. He did not score, but he finished with a steal and two rebounds in a 108-10 -T Brooklyn Nets win. After 10 years with a lot of close finishes, NASCAR's most popular driver wins the most popular race once again. To the Daytona 500 we go. After 39 laps into the epic race, the rain started coming down heavy, forcing a delay that lasted six and a half hours. Resuming action with 57 laps left to go, a nasty pileup collected several drivers, including number 10, former IndyCar star Danica Patrick, knocking her out of the race. The drama never ended, including the last lap, which after another car pileup, Dale Earnhardt Jr. edged out Danny Hamlet at the checkered flag. This was his second Daytona 500 win, 10 years after winning his first one, which was the longest drought of a previous winner all time. Dale Earnhardt's father, NASCAR Hall of Famer Dale Sr., was killed in this racetrack back in 2001. The Winter Olympics have come to an end, and the United States had a good showing in Sochi. The U.S. finished second in the overall medal count with 28. Nine of those were gold. Host country Russia finished the Olympics with the most overall medals with 33, including 13 gold. So, I mean, it was a good showing by Olympics. I mean, we could have done a little better in hockey, but overall, I was very pleased. Definitely in the ice skating and the ice dancing. I mean, we placed gold, so that, that was free, really good to see. That free dance was amazing. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, and I was so happy that we got gold in that. What do you guys think about Jason Collins? Um, I really think that it's history making. I really think it's yeah. very innovative for um, other um, gay athletes. I think it's I think it's great. Let's go. I think a good thing with Jason Collins is he just said it's just basketball. Let's exactly. just play. That's right. Well, thanks, Rio. From races and games, several UM men geared up for a different type of competition last week. Alpha Gamma Delta hosted its annual He's a Lady pageant last Thursday. Contestants shows off their talents to the audience, including ribbon twirling and singing. At the end of the night, Alpha Delta Pi's Kevin Britt took home the crown. All proceeds from this year's pageant go to help diabetes research. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. For more UM News, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. And before we go, here's a look at the hip-hop violinist Joss Vietti. 
playing Sweet Home Alabama in Palm Palmer Hall. We'll see you again next week. Amazing. My favorite was uh, Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs>